Hello, and welcome to the Choreographer Basic Event Markup Tutorial. In this video, uh, we will take a look at Choreographer, which is a tool to help you uh, link music and game elements together. Uh, it can act as the foundation for a rhythm or music game, uh, and also enables really interesting other little connections between the gameplay uh, and music or audio. Uh, such as, you know, a little object that wobbles or dances along with uh, the beat of the, whatever music is playing. Uh, so for this to work, Choreographer uses a special form of uh, custom audio or music markup. Um, that markup drives an event system uh, that at runtime and also can power your own custom scripts, depending on, you know, what it is that you're trying to do. Um, the markup itself is created by developers uh, using tools that are provided by Choreographer itself. So before we dive into uh, all of the tools and how the markup works, uh, let's explain what the markup is. If you imagine your audio file as one big timeline, markup is the ability for you to go in and specify where certain things should happen inside of the audio at certain times. Uh, we call the markup basically events, where each event can either be one moment or a span of time uh, or and well and optionally can include a payload and a payload is a bit of data that that is kind of defines or otherwise adds some measure of spice to whatever is in that markup that event uh, at the given time in the music now choreographer comes with several tools to help you create this uh, this markup the main tool is called the choreography editor uh, and we'll show you that for sure the other uh, tool that uh, main tool that choreographer comes with is called the MIDI converter. And that's a professional tool uh, that allows you to take a MIDI file uh, and convert it into pure markup that choreographer consumes at runtime and is able to turn into events along with the music that you import into your project. We'll go into that a little bit more detail uh, later on, but uh, that should work to kind of get us oriented. All right. So for this tutorial, we're going to be working with uh, a modern Unity. At the time of recording, this is Unity 2018.4 and up. We're specifically using Unity 2019.4.18. The choreographer does come in two flavors. There's the choreographer base, and which is just known as choreographer. And then there's the choreographer professional edition. And the professional edition has some extra tools to help you with markup uh, that include um, but are not limited to um, certain analysis features, as well as um, the MIDI converter tool that I, I mentioned earlier. Uh, now, in this video, I'll be using kind of the, the demo contents that, that all installations of Choreographer come with, uh, the music track in that, and uh, to, to drive the demo, uh, and potentially some of the uh, pre-made choreography as well. Uh, okay, so let's Let's dive in. The first thing we're gonna do is open up the choreography editor. To do that, we're gonna go into uh, the window uh, menu and we're gonna select choreography editor. That will open up this uh, the window here with a whole lot of stuff. Now, just to really quickly cover what we're looking at, we have a choreography section, uh, which is a specific type of asset that's special for choreographer. Tempo section settings, which will define the tempo, the speed of the music. Uh, track settings, which we'll get to in a minute, but suffice to say that you can have multiple tracks in, in any choreography. Uh, and then down here, there are controls, which will become uh, interesting in a moment. And then uh, a section here, this big empty space will also be filled up uh, momentarily. Now, so to start, uh, let's create a new choreography. We'll create this new choreography. We'll call it Demo Choreo, and we'll put it in Assets. That's fine. There it appeared right here. Uh, and you'll see that it has a custom icon. Um, all right. The next thing we need to do is add an audio clip. We're going to pick Starlit Black, which is the default music that comes with Choreographer. Now, when I loaded that audio file, you see here that it loaded up the waveform. That's the audio. The next thing we want to look at here is the tempo section settings. The tempo section settings allow you to define what the music speed uh, is for your song. 120 BPM means that there's two beats uh, per second or 120 beats in a minute. Uh, that's what this is by default. If I set this to 60, 
these vertical lines that you see here, I'm going to set this to RMS so we can see them more clearly. These vertical lines are all one second's worth of time because it's one beat per second. Uh, and that's how we can get a very quick seconds timeline. If you're not dealing with music, so if I go into 120, which is the standard BPM for kind of middle of the road tempo, uh, we'll set that there. That does not line up with this music. Uh, now I can drag this tempo and you can see this reshaping a bit. I know that this track is 140 BPM. And that means that I can just come in here and type it. Uh, the next thing we need to do in order to add actual markup to the song is to create a what's known as a choreography track. Now there's choreography and then there are choreography tracks. And the choreography tracks are what actually contain the markup itself, the events. Um, first, let's create one of those uh, and we'll see why, why there are potentially multiple of these uh, within one choreography. We're going to call this um, beat track, uh, demo, demo beat track. Okay, cool. Uh, so now we have this. You'll see that, that the track to edit is now named demo beat track, and that is its event ID. If we have multiple events in here, they'll show up here, multiple tracks. Uh, this track that's currently selected, demo beat track, is, has the event ID of demo beat track. Now, if I wanted this to be bounce, I would type in bounce. Uh, and that renames the, the track as well. The name of the actual asset is still demo beat track. This is just the ID that you use to refer to it in the game. Uh, this is important because you can have multiple choreography that have tracks that use the same uh, ID. If I have two pieces of music and I want the bounce to happen regardless of which it is, it's just the markup matches the music, then I would name a track bounce for each of those choreography that are defined for the, the tracks. So let's get into event markup. Because I've set the beat, the BPM correctly, I can, and I have the snap to beat, I can just uh, go into draw mode here and click. And these are events. I'm just adding events to the nearest beat line that the uh, system sees. When I select one of these, you'll see that I have event settings down here. This zero is the number, the, the index of the event that appears in, uh, uh, that this event is within the um, track. Uh, what you'll see here is a start sample location and end sample location. And for all of these, those are the same. That is because these are what is known as uh, one-off events. They are instantaneous. They are a mark, a location in the audio that will happen once. There is no duration of this event. It's like you think about the moment of impact between a drum stick and a drum. That is one instant in time. That's what this concept is. However, if we switch to span, I can click here and then drag, and I can drag that out. That event now has a duration. If I select this event, I can go and see that the start sample location, the end sample location are different. What this means is that this event will last for this entire period, this, these three beats effectively. Uh, so that's the difference between a, a one-off and a span. So now we have one-offs and spans. What those look like at runtime, by the way, um, if I open the visualizer, we'll see here uh, that when we hit play, you see that little, that little flash up there, the little green flash, there it is again. Each one of these, whenever that plays back, the portion of the music that contains that event, the system gets a callback. That's what this is visualizing. And this will come become more important momentarily. Okay, so now that we've seen uh, events, both one-off and span, let's shift our focus to payloads. So specifically, what are payloads and why payloads? Uh, payloads are little pieces of data that you can attach to these events that gets sent to your game code. So for instance, if you wanted to track lyrics for music, you could stick the text for the word in a span that covers the amount of time that that word is being sung and add the word inside of it. And then that word would be available to you as the music is covering that time. Uh, that there are other options uh, as well. You could change the color of some, of some material setting or uh, something with a color payload. This allows you to add kind of a, a, a little bit of extra um, detail into what's happening in, in the music. Um, that is the purpose of payloads. They allow you to modify and amplify the gameplay experience based on the content of the music. So um, 
let's look at what we can do here. The first thing I'll show is the ability to modify an existing events payload. I can go in here and select payload. I will set this to be a uh, text. And now you'll see that has turned into something here. I can come in here and I can say bump. Now I have a text payload that is bump. When I get a this event and a callback in whatever my code is, I will see the word bump come along with this event and I can do whatever I want with it. Um, perhaps a more interesting event would be one that delete. I'll delete those. I'm going to set the payload that is initially drawn to a curve and then I'm going to draw a span. And you'll see here there's already an animation curve drawn out right there. What this lets me do is I can kind of come in here, double click it, and I have this curve editor. We can see that there we go. That's a nice curve. What, what we'll see here is that this, this curve kind of goes up and down and, and kind of bounces uh, through it. So we should be able to see now in here that in, that curve has happened. In fact, if I drag this whole thing down, we'll see it editing in real time. What the curve is doing, let's take a look at that visualizer again. When I hit play, we'll see this sphere resize based on this curve. This gives us an indication of what that curve feels like as the music is playing. Let's see how that feels. So it did a little four bounce, four part bounce there uh, going down uh, on each beat. The point is that I, I can go and tweak this, this curve to my heart's content uh, and I will get every single frame I can evaluate that curve in my code and apply it to something in the game to give it that instantaneous directly map to the music feel. So that is the basics of creating and editing events and payloads. There are several other payloads here that we can show you. Some of these are locked to the professional edition and the professional edition even provides you with the ability to define your own payload type. Uh, and that's kind of an advanced feature, but it lets you add multiple points of data if that's what you are looking to do and what you need. Choreographer does bring in this analysis uh, window, which I'll bring up here. Uh, and it provides us with two options for auto-generating uh, data. One is called RMS and one is called FFT. RMS is root mean square. There's kind of a, a little explainer here uh, underneath the text. Uh, this tells us what is the source we're going to look for analysis. Uh, and these are specifically um, the, the algorithms we're going to throw at the data to produce some kind of markup. In this case, RMS is a kind of a sense of what is the volume at any given time in the track. This lets you create kind of speaker effects or if you have like a robot talking and you, this is perfect for that type of experience. Evaluation frequency is how many, you know, steps do you take? These these are all very detailed and the specifically the specific details are are available via hover text. What we're going to do is show in this case uh, what a curve looks like. I am going to append um, uh, this here and I've, just by clicking that one track, you'll see that this curve was generated. Now this curve which I can't see if I zoom in too much, does to an extent match this RMS waveform. And that's because they use the same algorithm. Uh, it gives us the sense of what is the rough uh, volume at any given time. Uh, and now I have this curve. I can, uh, whoops, I can hit uh, visualizer and I get that kind of visualization happening. It's kind of a volume sense if you want to do speaker stuff. Let's take a look at the FFT. The FFT stands for Fast Fourier Transform, and it's a way to approximate um, certain frequencies. And we'll see here, if you look in this in this wave, uh, uh, in this space here, um, and if I can pull this out, you can see more, more detail. Uh, what we're seeing here is uh, these spikes are, are vertically going across the entire frequency spectrum. Uh, what this tells us is basically a rough equivalent of, you know, low end frequency is bassy, high end frequency is, is, uh, is not, is the opposite. Now, uh, what I can do is say the, let's say I want to have um, 10, yeah, let's go 20, uh, 30 FFTs per, per second. Uh, that means that I will have 30 evaluations happening in every second. Now, the reason we do this is because these are creating lots of data. Uh, and we show you a rough estimate of how much data is going to be available to the system. And what it lets you do at runtime is get an event that has all that information pre-computed. There is a built-in way to do this in Unity called get spectrum data. That 
is entirely runtime dependent. It is non-deterministic, which means if I play a game on my computer and you play the game on your computer, we're not going to get the exact same value because the time steps are going to be different and there's no way to guarantee that anything's going to come in at the same time with the same exact setup. Um, it's a very powerful tool, uh, but it can be a little bit more complex to use. It's one of the reasons that this is uh, kind of kept to the uh, professional edition version. So let's take a look at the MIDI converter tool. Uh, we'll go over here to window and uh, select choreographer MIDI converter. Awesome. Now we have this window here and it start, you'll notice that it starts with the open MIDI file button. Uh, I can go in here and choreographer does come with uh, a kind of MIDI version of, at least the professional edition comes with the MIDI version of uh, the music that is included, just so you can kind of start up Im immediately and see how it works. Uh, I'm going to go in here, I'm going to hit OK. Um, and you'll see that it already says that there, I have the ability to, to name the section, um, which is used for the tempo section settings. This is the tempo map that was from the MIDI file. Uh, you'll see that it auto detected 140 BPM, which is what we used in the, the that uh, choreography before. This lets me specify what is the audio file that this maps to. This is Starlet Black. You might think, well, what am I doing here? I've got Starlet Black MIDI and the, the, the Wave or AUG or MP3 file. Why am I doing both? I thought MIDI was a music file. MIDI is can be played back. What it is is kind of digital sheet music. That's the type of information that a MIDI file has. If you have a MIDI file that matches the actual WAV file, now you have all of the information about everything that happened inside of that file and when it happened, how hard it happened. And you can take that, that information and create your own set of data uh, of markup. Uh, and that's what this tool is, is built to do. The choreography track export you'll see in here. The idea here is that I can take uh, any specific instrument or MIDI layer, MIDI track, and get it into Choreographer. And that's a very fast way to get all of uh, everything working. Now, we have a video that specifically covers the MIDI converter itself. Uh, I recommend that you go watch it. Uh, it should be available, a link down in the description, uh, but it's definitely available on our channel. So in this video, we took a look at Choreographer, which is a tool to help you with audio interactivity in your game. Uh, specifically, we looked at basic event markup, and we hope that you found this both insightful and helpful uh, in evaluating Choreographer and uh, perhaps how to better understand how to use the tools. Uh, at any rate, it, please hit us up if you have any questions in our Discord uh, server or via our forums or the Unity forum. Uh, we're always happy to help answer questions, and we hope you uh, have a great day, and we look forward to playing what you make.